Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Forgotten Last Tudor Princess The Tudors were the most infamous and notorious royal family to ever rule over England. Throughout the reigns of the Tudor kings and queens, there would be thousands of executions across the lands, with Henry VIII executing 70,000 people, with some of his closest friends and even two of his wives meeting their bloody end at the executioner's scaffold. The last Tudor monarch was Elizabeth I, who died without any children, and she inherited the throne from Mary I, or Bloody Mary, who burned many people at the stake for their religious beliefs. Many believed that Elizabeth I was the last Tudor queen, or ruler, and members of the royal family, but interestingly, around 70 years after her death, there was a daughter born to a king of England who was given the surname Tudor. But who is this forgotten last Tudor princess? Charles II is remembered in history as the Merry Monarch, and as a man who had many mistresses and illegitimate children. In fact, he had so many illegitimate children that not one of these was legitimate and was considered an heir to the throne. His brother James II became the king after him, but many of Charles II's illegitimate children wanted to become the king, including the Duke of Monmouth, James Scott, who led a significant rebellion against James II. But on the 16th of October 1673, a daughter to King Charles II and his mistress, Mary Mole Davies, was born. The baby was named Mary, and her mother was an actress and entertainer before and during her time as a royal mistress. Mole had met the king in a theatre or coffee house in 1667, and she charmed him with her beauty. After becoming a mistress, she flaunted the wealth she gained from the king, and developed a reputation for greed and vulgarity, and would show off her mighty pretty fine coach and expensive rings given to her from the king. But shortly after the birth of the child Mary, Charles dismissed Mole, as he preferred Nell Gwynne, a new mistress and rival for the king's affection. Nell Gwynne and Mole Davies were so embittered in a rivalry that Nell purposely dropped a powerful laxative into a piece of cake Mole was to eat before she was to leave for the king's bedchamber. For sleeping with the king, she was given an annual pension of £1,000 for the rest of her life, and it was said that the king had furnished her house, but her and the king's daughter Mary grew up on the southwest side of St James's Square, close to the Palace of Whitehall and St James's Park, and from an early age she was surrounded by high society of the nobility. She sought a career on the stage and followed in her mother's footsteps, beginning a career as an actress, and she would become part of Charles II's court and would put on many performances for the king, her father. At the age of nine, she sang the part of a Roman god and of Cupid alongside her mother, who was performing as Venus. However, what is interesting is that at the age of around seven, on the 10th of December 1680, Charles II did something rather extraordinary to recognise the young Mary as his own daughter and as a girl who had royal blood and heritage. Her paternity was recognised and by royal warrant she was granted the name Tudor, which was a tribute to the Tudor family, who Charles II descended from through his great-grandmother, Mary, Queen of Scots. The executed Scottish monarch Mary had Tudor blood also, as her paternal grandmother was Margaret Tudor, the older sister of Henry VIII, and she was also the grand-niece of Henry VII. By giving Mary this name Tudor, Charles II accepted her as his, but also recognised his links to the Tudor royal family. This was interesting, as Henry VIII, during his reign, would ban the Stuarts from ever becoming the kings and queens of England, and this changed during the reign of Elizabeth I, who accepted her successor as the Scottish king, James. Now, James I was Charles II's grandfather, and by making Mary Mary Tudor and giving her the status of an earl, she was issued an annual salary and payment of £1,500, which today would be around a quarter of a million pounds a year. And later the following year, she was given the status of the daughter of a duke. But little else is known about Lady Mary Tudor. And on the 18th of August, 1687, she married Edward Radcliffe, the second Earl of Derwentwater, and she had four children with him. 
There was a son named James and a daughter named Mary, another son named Charles and finally another son named Francis. However, the couple would separate in 1700 after Mary was not willing to convert to Catholicism. But on the 23rd of May 1703, she married Henry Graham following the death of Lord Derwent Water. But then Graham died two years later and a few months after, Mary married again, this time to Major James Rook. On the 5th of November 1726, at the age of 53, Lady Mary Tudor died. Her life was one which was interesting and she dreamed throughout her life of being an actress like her mother, and she would perform in front of the King of England, who was also her father. However, ultimately, she was given the surname and name Tudor to solidify her status as a descendant of kings and queens. This allowed Charles II to accept her as his daughter, and in a sense, Mary became the final Tudor daughter and girl who had some role in royalty. Thank you for watching and support. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.